Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. This is going to be the last Top 5 Friday of the year. So we won't have another one until the first week of January, the first Friday of January anyways. Um, we're going to, I'm going to preface this with there are more videos coming. Um, they may not be what you expect, they may not be what you want, but I'm going to try out a couple new things with the channel. You can like, dislike, whatever you want to do, but I need you to interact and let me know what kind of content you want to see. Um, if any of these new ideas coming are things that you like, I really need to hear from you. If you dislike them, give that dislike button a click. Um, it doesn't hurt my feelings whatsoever. I don't need the support, I need the input, okay? So, let me know um, on those videos use the like and dislike buttons like they were first intended to whether or not you like or dislike that content so top five friday today is my top reads of 2018 period i'm going to start off with an honorable mention one that uh, i mentioned this a couple episodes back about wanting to bring out books that were you know maybe other people thought were great that i didn't care too much for this time i am going to bite the bullet and take off one of my favorite reads of the year because I know most of you will not like it, will not enjoy it. Um, so we are going to start off with an honorable mention which is Haruki Murakami's Killing Commendatory. This one, I, I loved everything about it, but I know it's not going to be for everyone. The rest of these books, I'm pretty sure most people will like. This one, while it was one of my favorites, it'd probably be number, you know, number two on the list, because I did like one just that much more. Um, I know that most of you won't like it, so I'm going to bite the bullet on this one and do the ones that I think that I should, you, everybody should go out and buy. I don't think everybody should run out and buy this one. Plus, there's a problem with the actual hardcover of the book. Um, watch my review for that. So, honorable mention out of the way, jump into number five, Gun Love by Jennifer Clement. Uh, this book has stuck with me uh, half the year. Um, I can't remember exactly when I read it. It was before blogging for books uh, closed. So at least half the year ago, I got it uh, free for review, and it's one of my favorites of the year. Uh, I, I remember every single detail. It's a rather short book, but I remember every single detail of this novel. Um, the little girl, the, the way that guns were handled in the book, where there really was no side taken, and I appreciate that. This is one of the reasons why I hated Elevation, Stephen King's Elevation so much, is because he took a side and he cemented. Whether that side is right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Um, because life is not right or wrong. Uh, human beings are not right or wrong. Um, by, you know, just by definition. We can be right, we can be wrong. And there are some right things about what are perceived wrong, and there are some wrong things about, you know, what's perceived right. Uh, and I think she did very well with this. Jennifer Clement is definitely an author I'm going to be, uh, whose books, I almost said I'm going to consume her. Um, I'm going to be consuming her fiction, you know, as the years go on. So number four, Araminta Hall's Our Kind of Cruelty. I was fascinated by this book. Um, it was my number one for most of the year and the, re the only reason I dropped it down is because I am still thinking of a group of characters more than uh, and in other books also. I am still thinking about those characters more and what stuck with me the most about this one wasn't so much the characters, but the way the characters were handled. Um, like, I don't remember any of the characters' names in here, and that's, that's funny. Uh, Gun loves the same way. I'm bad with character names as it is. But none of, them none of their personalities really stuck out. It's more what happened. This is probably the best story, just hands down, best story I read in 2018. Um, a lot of it had to do with, this is like the anti-you, um, you, the Caroline Kepnes is you, this is the, this is the response to that book, basically, and it, it's funny because, uh, Aaron Minta Hall and Caroline Kepnes, I've seen, Caroline Kepnes, I've seen them interact online, on Twitter, and they're just, you know, they're great to each other, so it's not like Aaron Minta Hall is coming out, you know, shots fired at, uh, at Kepnes, <laughs> that's not what happened. What happened here is she wanted to give the other side the other possibility of this type of stalkerish relationship, and she nailed it. And at number three, we have The Mere Wife by Maria Davana Headley. This book, um, I, I'm a big fan of the 
Beowulf, legend, uh, poem, all that. This put a an amazing twist on the story and gave different characters uh, point of views from that story. It modernized it. It tackled some some uh, issues with society today. Um, it tackles all all different aspects of life today. It tackles the impoverished. It tackles the wealthy. It tackles everything. I was very impressed with what she did, and the imagery toward the end is fantastic. Okay, so next we have our top two books. Um, if you've been a fan of the channel this year, you've heard me talk about both of these authors over and over and over again. You've heard me talk about both of these books. Um, one of them more so than the other, but just because there was really no reason, no purpose to bring up the number one. But number two is, of course, The Outsider by Stephen King. The reason this book is on here um, is going to surprise some people, because I keep hearing time and time again that the second half of this book is terrible. Um, I thought the beginning of the book, while engaging, was just another generic thriller on par with, like, Mr. Mercedes, or even some of the other stuff, like, like Harlan Coben. Um, in fact, he, he mentions Harlan Coben books in this one. It's almost like he was shooting for that. And it just got, it, it, to a certain point, I was like, okay, I'm ready for this to end. And as soon as I felt that way, the book completely switched gears, and it turned into a Stephen King book. What he does in the second half of this novel is what Stephen King always does, um, which it, it, it doesn't really drive me crazy as much as I just don't understand people who show up for a Stephen King novel and then get to the second half of this book and dislike it. And there's a lot of you that I agree with on everything else when it comes to Stephen King. We dislike Tommyknockers together. We dislike Dreamcatcher together. We dislike all of those books. But then we get to this one, and the second half of this book is good King content. is some of his best work. It's his story within a story. It's the, There's a the supernatural aspect. Everything that King has done right in his career, he does right in the second half of this book. But still, I'm seeing people enjoying the front matter more than the back half. And that's really interesting to me, and I'm wondering if it's because he's gotten people into this new style of his, and they have forgotten the old version of King. Because from Doctor Sleep all the way up until, I would say, yeah, Sleeping Beauties, End of Watch, all that stuff, he's been writing the same kind of way. It's not been, it has not had that flavor other than Revival. Um, but I hear that was a trunk novel that was sitting around for a while, just like Pet Cemetery was. But there, and that, that might not be true, but what I'm getting at is there was a problem with those books because there was no King content in those books. The Mercedes trilogy, you did get some stuff in the way of Brady Hartsfield there towards the end, but mostly what we got was just generic thriller. And that's what you get at the beginning of The Outsider, but then as soon as King start, starts doing what King always did before before uh, Dr. Sleep, that's where people are having a problem and an issue, and that, that really fascinates me. So if you want to talk about that more, you can down there in the comments. Unless we've already talked about this, then, I mean, there's no really, real reason to rehash it. Anywho, going on to the number one spot. There are characters in this book that I cannot get out of my head. Eggy and Lo, these two characters, I, I don't know why they stuck with me as well as they did, probably because they remind me of me and my wife, but the number one spot goes to Providence by Carolina Kepnes. Caroline Kepnes. I always want to, like, roll it Carolina. It's not. It's Caroline Kepnes. It's a fantastic, fantastic book, and it has stayed with me. Yes, it came out this year, but I read it during the winter uh, in December of last year. But it did come out this year, so I'm putting it in this year. Um, the the, the story is great, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, I'm not going to get into it whatsoever. I really did appreciate the, uh, the extra aspect that she added to the book. And if you want to talk about this, and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, um, but if you want to talk about what happens between the two main characters, then we can. But what I really appreciated was Aggie and Lo, the detective and his wife. Those two characters really, really stood out for me. And... I had the same thing happen with Hidden Bodies. Some of the side characters meant more to me than the main characters. Not that I don't love Joe, um, or love, 
this is the character's name, or in you. Not that I didn't love Beck and Joe and reading about those characters, but the side characters. Kepnes, what Kepnes does that almost no other author in her genre does is makes the smallest character matter. And I find that, I, I, I love that. Everybody matters in one of her books. There are no throwaway characters. There are no superfluous characters. There are only characters there to forward the plot. And even if they don't forward the plot, they still get a full story. Everybody in her books get a full story. And she write, reminds me of Stephen King in that regard. So, this year we have, in the top five, we have some new faces. We have some old faces. Um, and especially if you don't go out and buy any, uh, any other books this year, I highly suggest getting the top two, which is Stephen King's The Outsider, keeping in mind what I just said about it, and Providence by Caroline Ketnis, which is funny because both of these books have the same kind of thing. They could be fine. The stories could be fine without the extra added element but they added it, and I appreciate that they had the the courage to add those extra elements and step outside maybe their comfort zone or their reader's comfort zone. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been the best books of 2018. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!